Yo, what's happening, people? It's your boy, Del Boy, and welcome to the first episode of In The Know With. And today we are in the new, in the know with JP. How are you, you, my brother? I'm good, my brother. How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. So I want to do a little bit of an icebreaker before we kind of get into the get into the meat and bones of everything. Um, if you were to have dinner with anyone, dead or alive, mm-hmm. who would it be with? It doesn't have to be wrestling related. It could be anyone and why. Say no more, say no more. Um, probably Michael Jackson, you know? Yeah. I'm not going to lie, MJ. Obviously, like, the guy's the king of pop. And, yeah. like, what, what I want to know is, obviously, I wanted to go a bit deeper. I wanted to, obviously, like, go into, like, you know, why he, he did what he did with, obviously, with his physique, changing the colour of his skin. Because I know bits and pieces. Yeah, but you don't know the full story the full whack, do you know what I mean? So if I ever had the opportunity to speak to him, whether it be in heaven or whatever, do you know what I mean? I'd, I'd ask him that up front. I'd say, my man, look, why? Why did you do what you've done? Yeah. And we, you know, and just take things from there. Obviously, that wouldn't be the first question that man would ask him. But yeah, but yeah oh, definitely. Okay. Well, what would you say your favourite Michael Jackson song is? Uh, you're looking at probably Stranger in Moscow. Wow, um, absolute yeah. banger, absolute <laughs> banger. I love that song with all my heart. I said to you, and it relates to me, um, obviously, because I moved from Tottenham, um, to like Yorkshire about six years ago. Oh, for real? Oh, so you're originally from Tottenham, yeah. Oh, with um, the like, obviously, when, when I'm listening to that song now, it, it has a completely different meaning to when I was a child, um, and obviously, I like. Still, sometimes to this day, I feel like I'm an alien because I only live in a tiny little village. Yeah, I the, like the, I don't live in Hull itself. I live in a tiny little village about half an hour away from Hull, where literally everybody knows each other and like they've grew up with each other. There's only one school up in these ends, so I'm like, oh, do you know what I mean? So yeah. everybody's tight, and then there's there's me. So I feel like I'm that stranger in Moscow, so to speak. Yeah. That's, that was, that's, boy, the way you've explained it now, it's kind of made me kind of understand why that song means so much to you now. So yeah. it's dope, man. Well, let's even get into it. So let's set the scene growing up in Tottenham. What mm. was that moment for you growing up that made you fall in love with wrestling? It was school. It was secondary school. Went to school in Wood Green and every break time, every lunch time, we'd all be having like Royal Rumbles in the corridor people punching, kicking each other, trying not to hurt each other. Yeah, but, but just... You know, get him. <laughs> <laughs> get, 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 get a slight nick, do you know what I mean? And obviously, like, you know, you, you're doing, like, choke slams in the field, sharpshooters. The attitude era was there, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Bret Hart was live. As I said earlier, people were trying sharpshooters on each other. Goldberg was live in WCW, so out of nowhere, somebody could spear you. Spear, yeah. And it's like, you know what? And there was always one, there was always one person that people thought, yeah, this, this boy could, if he wanted to, do it. And that was me. Ask any of my schoolmates, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, what was he going to be when he was older? He's going to be a wrestler. So obviously, you know, that's what, that was the original reason why I do what I'm doing now, if that makes sense. Oh, no, that's proper problems. I, even myself, I remember, like, growing up in secondary school. Not even secondary school, like, primary school. Um, mm. Literally the same as what you explained. Me and my friends will be, like, you know, trying to do, like, tornado DDTs and suplexes. And, you know, we Man, tried, it's... like, to emulate these moves. But obviously, because they, they're our friends, we're not trying to hurt them. But obviously, sometimes mm. it can happen, you know, you could, you know, accidentally, like, injure someone with, like, a forearm or, you know, try to stun someone. You end up injuring your back. But, I mean, I feel like all of us, we've all just, especially like growing up as wrestling fans, I feel like we've all just kind of lived a similar life. For real. It's actually crazy. But no in terms of like... You, yeah, sorry, go on. No, no matter who you are, especially, you know, people of my generation, people of, you know, the generation before, as you said, we've all got the same lifestyle in school. And it, it's mad. Whoever you speak to, especially our era, Whoever you speak to, it's all yeah. the same, 
Nah, it's crazy. You mentioned earlier. I'm um, discuss. I'm talking about um WWE, WWF. Actually, they were at WCW. Um, what like what was like the com- like what was the show that you were watching most mostly? And who would you say were your favorite wrestlers growing up? It was definitely Nitro. Um, okay. My, my um my mate was a tape trader, and I used to watch ECW as well. So there was there was more time where I'd watch people like Bret Hart, and I became infatuated with Canada. To the point where, when I was in school, I'd say I was Canadian. Because <laughs> I, 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 I knew so much about yeah. Canada. Like, you've never been there, but you like someone can ask you, where's this? And you'd be like, yeah, it's there. Like, Do you know what I mean? So, like, watching people like Bret Hart, watching people like Owen Hart, even Chris Jericho with that whole rock star phase when he was going through that in Nitro. And then, obviously... Moving on to ECW, you had people like Robert Van Damme, you had people like Jerry Lynn, Lance Storm, who at the time nobody had heard of. But then obviously, eight, nine years down the line, you're looking at people like RVD and they're absolutely massive. Biggest stars, stars in the world. And it's, it's kind of like when you, <laughs> when you play football manager and then you discover a wonder kid and then eight, nine years later, people are like, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I saw him about ten years yeah. ago. I, I was that guy when I was um, when I was young. Even TNA, when TNA first started popping off, um, I was quite advantageous to the fact that I could get you know VHSs, and there was the wrestling channel as well. Oh, I f- yeah, on the podcast, I feel like that's one thing we always touch on, just like the wrestling channel and how it opened our eyes to watching stuff like Ring of Honor, CZW, mm-hmm. TNA. Noah, so it's, it's just crazy. We've all lived the same life. We've yeah. all lived the same life. Without fail. And it's like, you, you discover people like AJ Styles, um, you know, Loki, um, Samoa Joe, CM Punk. And it's like, raw. there's life away from the WWE exactly. that I can invest in. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, it's, it was all mad watching watching that, but then obviously the evolution of watching wrestling, kind of coming away from the WWE, WWE at the time, yeah. And it was like, I'm gonna kind of deviate away, but still follow the, the main product. Do you know what I mean? Not the sole product, but the main product, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes sense. No, it's, it's just crazy. We've actually all lived the same life, man. It's just, when you're like, well, even when you mention the whole wrestling channel, it's like, it's nuts, like the amount of wrestlers that I've had the chance to speak with, it just seems to be like back in the day there's a lot of wrestlers that'll say you know you spoke about trading tapes and that's the only way you could more or less like figure out new wrestlers and how they've that's how they met other wrestlers whereas a lot of wrestlers i've spoken to now it's like yeah i grew up watching the wrestling channel and it opened my eyes to knowing that yeah there is life beyond wwe so i could potentially you know aim to be at ring of honor aim to be at tna aim to be in japan aim to be in somewhere in europe so nah it's absolutely crazy so in terms of yourself, what was what yeah. was that moment where you said to yourself, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pursue wrestling. Wrestling is, you know, I'm sure because I feel like everyone, especially all wrestling fans, we've all, you know, like for me when I was drunk, I wanted to be a wrestler, I wouldn't lie to you. Yeah. But then as time went on, I realized I actually don't want to be a wrestler. It's 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 not for me. But I mean now that because I do wrestling podcasting, I do at least want to have one match. Yeah. Right? Because I've seen the training and I've seen, you know, the work that goes into it. So the appreciation for wrestling is at a different level. But what was that moment for you that you said, you know what, this is what I want to pursue? So, obviously, when I was in, living in London, um, I was watching, you know, several different companies and I thought to myself, I might have a fair whack at this, but at the time I had an injury. Um, I tore my ACL playing football. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's mad. Right. Um, and the doctor said to me, oh, to, read, like, to make it better, lose weight. So me being me, I lost four stone in four months and it still yeah. wasn't clicking. Do you yeah. know what I mean? We were still shaked. It was, it was murked. Um, but like, I moved up here and I watched the show um, with the main event being Rampage Brown. I've seen Rampage Brown in progress. Oh yeah. I thought, yeah, I like this guy. This guy obviously represents me, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. And like, I said to my partner, uh, and we're walking back from the show because my partner, the the way we met was through a wrestling um, forum on Facebook. Oh, okay. 
who came with me to the show, obviously, because she had a vested interest in wrestling. Yeah. So said, you know, these guys have a school. It's run by Nathan Cruz. The Northeast and up north near Newcastle is run by Rampage Brown. So two oh. seriously, you know, repu- serious. that, 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 reputable they, wrestlers, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you've got like, like Matt Myers as well, who as well as Nathan Cruz in Yorkshire is a, is a big, big name. So I was like, boom, I'm, I'm going to go, but I need an operation on my knee. So I went full heartedly. Um, and then I, I kept going for like two, three months. And my knee just wasn't having it. But when my son was born, me, in the midst of me having the rehab for my knee, I thought, I need to show my son that I need that he can achieve his dreams as long as he applicates himself to it, as long as he has the drive and the determination to do it. And as a result of that, I think it's partly because I saw this show at Livo and thought, yeah, I can do this if I put the application towards it. But it's also showing my children as well, look, don't ever, ever dismiss your dreams no matter how far-fetched they, they seem, do you know what I mean? So it's kind of a mix of both, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's... Um, no, it's very important, especially now where people are more or less kind of like trying to find where their place is in life. So, and I mean, years ago, it probably would have felt like it was far-fetched to be able to do certain things, you know. Growing up, I know there's people that thought that being a YouTuber wouldn't be a career or being a podcaster wouldn't be a career. So I think it's just important to instill in the younger ones that, listen, if you put your mind to it and you work hard, you're always going to get to where you want to be. You gladly touched up, touched, touched up on um, Rampage Brown about, you know, he represents you. So growing up as a wrestling fan, did you feel like you were represented enough? And did you, or did you feel that representation was important when you were growing up in terms of in wrestling? Most definitely. Obviously, you know, even even back then when I was watching Nitro, you see people like Harlem Me, you see people like Nation of Domination. Um, obviously Rocky Maya V at the time moving to the to be the rock, Dilo Brown, um, Farouk. Um, even if you stretch it an even bit you know, more back, bad news brown and Ahmed Johnson and people like that. Are we represented enough? No, that's another reason why I wanted to be a wrestler because more time than not, I walk into, I walk into a locker room, um, let's say for, you know, for a certain, for promotion and I'm the only person of colour there. Yeah. I'm thinking, this, this is good that I'm booked, but obviously with people like Big T Justice releasing a list of hundreds of black wrestlers that are available. For Cody and yeah, I remember that big up BT. Yeah, for real. And obviously with COVID being COVID, nobody's had the chance to use that list. Do you know what I mean? But obviously now's the time for you know black wrestlers or even wrestlers of a, a minority to shine up because you know it's it just it's needed it's needed for people like my son because if i weren't there who's he gonna look at but you know at the end of the day you know that's that's why i'm that's as i said for my son that's why i'm doing what i'm doing but going back to the question yeah were we represented enough probably not probably not and some of the like stereotypical ways of booking a black wrestler again, you know, can be deviated against in 2020. You know, after book us as, as, as a certain type of wrestler, if that makes sense. Um, we can be anybody that we, we want to be, if that makes sense. So, yeah. No, so, yeah. Definitely. Because like, even in the latest episode of the podcast, we discussed, um, we just quickly touched upon um, the nation of domination. Mm-hmm. And we made a point of, if we really like listen to what the nation of domination's mission statement was, it's not far fetched from what a lot of like like they weren't wrong like they were hated for being pro black in essence you know what I'm saying mm. and when you go back and listen to some of the stuff that they're saying it's very relevant to 
what's going on now in terms of like you know with a lot of the uh, protest that's been going on in terms of like Black Lives Matter and and SARS. So it's like it's crazy how and even outside of race, like if you look at that like Daniel Bryan, he done his character, his recent mm. um, Hill character was on Saving the Planet, and it's just funny how they can like flip positive messages into making you being the most hated person. I mean, for entertainment values, it works. But then when you actually go back and actually deep it, it's like, oh shit, Farouk wasn't chatting shit, Dilo wasn't chatting shit, The Rock wasn't chatting shit. So, nah, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. I wanted to also know, what is it like um, navigating throughout this? So how, how long have you been active um, as a wrestler? Um, since October um, of 2019, oh, um, oh, I've been it's... training. You know. Yeah, yeah, um, but I've been training since obviously 2015. But as I, as I said, because of the break, because of my knee, because of my son, because of my daughter being born, I've only taken it seriously for the past two years. Yeah. Um, in respect to navigation, even what we touched up upon in regards to um, Black Lives Matter. As you can probably tell on my, on my Twitter, I'm very vocal about that. Oh, yeah, I've seen um, as well as, um, And it, even it, the, the, the day job that I'm in, I have to, I almost feel like I'm treading on eggshells. So certain times I'm like to promoters, do you mind if I post this? Because I don't want to rub people up the wrong way. And most the promoters that I work for or that are interested in me next year, in touch wood if COVID goes away, um, say, no, yeah, go, that's fine, go right ahead. Um, you know, what you're saying is is a positive message. You're not saying, you know, if the cops and, and stuff like that. So at the end of the day, navigating my way around, as I, as I said earlier, sometimes does feel like treading eggshells, but all of the people that I work with, like directly, um, are, are very supportive of me being who I am. Um, so that, that's all I care about. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to work every weekend yeah. because I've got two kids. I don't necessarily want to work too far away from home again because I've got two kids. Um, so, but all in all, everybody that I directly work with has been supportive of, of me and kind of like, I, I won't call it a crusade because it's not just me that's doing it, but they've been supportive of my words and, and my actions on, on social media and in person, so. That is, that is proper, proper dope. I think it's definitely important for promoters to more or less understand where their talent with our black, white, just to understand that the, the fights that they're going, the fights that they're fighting, um, you, you'd want promoters to more or less be allies as opposed to them kind of trying to be like, you know what, um, I'm not too comfortable with you. You know, we, we'd want everyone, regardless of their faith, religion, to be able to speak their truth. And, you know, I feel like it's important. I feel like a lot of um, promoters are starting to see, you know, that the cause isn't necessarily the whole art. You're saying black lives, you're just saying black lives overall, white lives or other lives. It's more or less like at this moment in time, black lives are the ones that are being killed for no reason, being persecuted for no reason. So we have to stand with you as opposed to just shooing you away and not wanting to work alongside you. So I think that's I think that's important. Um, if you were to describe your wrestling style or wrestlers that influenced you. Because I, know, so I know you said Michael Jackson, you'd have a dinner with Michael Jackson. And when I was watching your matches, I realised you actually wear one glove. Would you say that's inspired by Michael Jackson? Yeah. It's inspired by Michael Jackson um, to a certain extent. Um, my, my finish is called the Red Rum DDT, um, which if you reverse Red Rum, it's murder. murder. Yeah. Obviously, if you look at murderers with like, one, guns, they yeah. wear one glove. So obviously, family friendly. You look at Michael Jackson, yeah. but you know, at the end of the day, um, the, a, a few people have inspired me um, over the years. You're looking at, I look at more character based wrestlers, um, people like Jake the Snake, um, people like Raven, 
Um, you know, and funnily enough, both of those has a finisher as, as their DDT. DDT, yeah. So do you know what I mean? So everything that I do is because of people like that. In regards to my style, I'd say I'm very like very rough shot, like brawler. Um, I hardly use tech. Um, I'm gonna sound a bit like, like one of my best mates, Roy Johnson. Big up Roy Johnson. Big up Roy Johnson. Big up Roy Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I need tech if I can punch the lights out? Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? When I saw that in Blackpool, so obviously I, saw, I watched I watched him um, in Blackpool, and I thought, hey, you know what, that big net really makes sense. Do you know what I mean? So obviously there's him. I've, I've known him before wrestling, if that makes sense. We met in Miami. Oh, sure. Yeah, um, Miami uh, WrestleMania 28. We met up at, and okay. since then, I he's he's given me ideas. He's mentored me. Um, and he's just been, you know, there for me whenever I need him. So, you know, he's a, as you know, he's a top, top lad. Um, and so the, the brawler styles there, obviously, you know, Rampage Brown, for example. But um, my trainers, uh, my trainers, especially people like Matt Mines, uh, Nathan Cruz, I've been to a couple of seminars with Rampage Brown. Um, there's a tag team up north called Reeves and Rogan. They work the broader style as well. Um, keep an eye out for them. And Jack Maxwell as well. Um, I work with him. Um, he's one of my mates. Um, one of my other trainers, Dutch, um, who told me to work the big man style. Because before, before I went to um, Fight Factory in Lincoln, um, I didn't really have a style, if that makes sense. Um, but because they were open four times a week, I found the time to applicate myself to, um, to really find how that works best for me. So almost looking at kind of like a no sell style. Um, and obviously if, the, if I'm working hill, the face bumps me like with a big body slam, and, you know, the crowd erupts, blah, blah, blah. So without Dutch being there for me and finding that style for me, I, I don't know if I'd ever debut. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I didn't know who, yeah. how to wrestle. I knew how to wrestle. I just didn't yeah. know what fitted me. If that means. So th that's a long list of people. Don't get me wrong. All of those people have some place, big place in regards to finding who I am as a wrestler, if that makes sense. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. In terms of the big man style, would you say that it's, it has become, what's the, what's the best way to describe it? It, would you say that the big man star has kind of gone in decline? Because I see, you know, you've got the likes of like the Walters, you've got the Keith Lees, you've got Hoodfoot. There's so many wrestlers that are the bigger frames, but it's mixed with either like a high flying style or like a strong style or brawling style. It's not necessarily like the generic Andre the Giant big man. It seems to be like a lot of the bigger men now seem to be more hybrid wrestlers. So would you say yeah. there's a decline in? you know, more Braun Strowman's and more of you? I mean, what, what it is, is that if I was just generic big man, I don't think I'd be booked anywhere. Yeah. Because I've got character, because I've got charisma, I think that's the reasons why. I think if you're just a generic big guy with nothing else to offer, you're struggling in British wrestling. Yeah. Because the fans... The fans in, in Britain and the fans were in the promotions that I've gone to, especially the kids, the kids wouldn't connect with me if I was just generic big man. The kids connect with me because not, I don't just, you know, just do the, the happy clappy stuff. Um, I'm quite energetic. I'm quite loud in the ring. Everything that I do is loud. Um, so I'm looking at generic big guys in British wrestling and... I'm struggling. I'm struggling to think of a generic big guy that's succeeding in British wrestling. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, so you, know, you look at people like look at people like Rampage Brown. Rampage Brown is the best in Europe. Rampage Brown does things like drop kicks. Do you know what I mean? He's not just shoulder tackle, shoulder tackle. Do you know what I mean? 
Yeah, yeah you can do it all, you know what I mean? Um, so you've, you've got to have, not, I wouldn't say a plan B, but a plan A, brackets one, if that makes sense, to even be noticed, even get out of training, if you're just, if you're just working the big man style. So that's probably the reason why it took me so long to even get out in front of a crowd because I didn't know who I was. I was generic big man, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it, it's, it's tough if you haven't got a moon soul in your repertoire um, or, you know, a frog splash. Um, oh, I'm I'm destroyer. You know what I mean? So... <laughs> How, did, how that became a transition move, that, that it upset me. Sense. It, it upsets me. I said, I said this in a group chat the other day. I said, the Canadian Destroyer was one of the best finishers I've ever seen. When Pete Williams done it the first time on an impact on Fox Sports, so you know they had that little ticket. Yeah, at the, the bottom. bottom, yeah, exactly. <laughs> when he done that, I was like, I jumped out of my seat because obviously he was part of Team Canada. It's nothing and I was like, ever seen before. Yeah, what the yeah. hell have I just seen? So how that anyway? That, that's <laughs> how that became. I, I, I even remember him tweeting a few months ago. I can't remember what event it was. I think it might have earlier in the year. I think it might have been an NXT versus NXT UK event, and mm. I can't remember who done the move. But then it became like one of those like viral gifs on Twitter, and he just quote tweeted it like, "Jesus, this was never meant to become a transition move." And I could feel the pain when he said that. <laughs> because now it's like, of, of the amount of wrestling shows I've been to in like the last three years since we started mm-hmm. doing the podcast. So we mm-hmm. try to go to as many like UK shows, whether it's like big top tier promotions or just little local promotions. Mm-hmm. And at least one or two matches, you're getting a Canadian Destroyer that is not finishing the match or it's not even close to the end of the match. Mm-hmm. So no, I, f- I feel his pain because... Even recently when, um, what match was it? Like two weeks ago, was Pentagon Junior versus Phoenix. And right. then Phoenix won the match with the Canadian Destroyer. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> it, actually won, it actually won the match. That's crazy. That's crazy. Are you, are you kicking? I'll oh, sorry, go on. I mean, uh, going on to um, so sick in the transitions, obviously, of my finish is the DDT. So when when I see a DDT just be done in the middle of the match, and obviously I look at people like Jake the Snake, Raven, finishing matches with a DDT, and somebody hits a DDT mid-match, and then, you know, they get a four seed or, or a two count or whatever. Yeah. I'm thinking, what, what, what? Like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Gone. It's crazy. It's, it's, like the, it's like the super kick as well. But mm. I feel like it's just the evolution of wrestling. There's going to be certain moves like, People are going to start using stuff like the F5 as mm. transition moves soon. And it's like, I don't know. I don't know how, what, what kind of moves you're going to have to do to put your opponent down. But, I mean, I feel like that's just resting at this moment. Um, what promotions are you keeping up with at the moment? Definitely keep up with um, AEW. Okay, moment. how are you finding yeah. that? All right, all right. Um, I'm finding it, um, it's, it... I find it very difficult to watch wrestling at the moment with no crowds. Yeah, so, I feel like that was my initial struggle during mm. um, the beginning of lockdown. AEW, they've got like a slight crowd at Daily Place, which is kind of keeping me going. Yeah. Um, I'm keeping up with New Japan oh, yeah. um, as well. And I, fl- I flick through WWE. Um, and, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm flicking through WWE. Obviously, I know about Rampage signing for NXT UK. Um, Huge. When I saw the announcement, I was just like, wait, what? A matter of time. Yeah. Like, what took you guys so long? With, um, <laughs> I think with Rampage, it, it was more it being right for all parties. Because WWE knew about him when he was in um, Florida, yeah. Florida Championship Wrestling. So it's not like they weren't aware of, of who this guy was. Yeah. I'm thinking it was it was more the fact that it was time for Rampage, you know, to yeah, go. Yeah. Rather than WWE knocking on his door four or five years later. If that yeah. Makes 
So, I, so I, do, I, I do remember a match she'd done in, um, I think it was in ECW, but I think when they came to London. Yeah. I, think, I, I can't remember who, it might have been Big Daddy V maybe, mm. or Mark Henry, one of the two. I know Tony Atlas was their manager at the time, so one of them, mm. I remember him ha- having a match there. But yeah, when I saw the announcement um, this past week, I was just like, I'm happy because I feel like with NXT UK, they've been lacking with you know black superstars on, on the roster. I know they've got um, Ashton Smith. Um, yeah. There's another guy, I can't remember his name, but... Go um, Dreadlocks. Isn't yeah, it? I know, yeah. They, they haven't got that many super... And I think in general, NXT UK is lacking stars. So, I mean, Rampage Jackson would be... is a great get. Hopefully he can, you know, knock Walter off and take the... NXT UK Championship, hopefully. hopefully. Fingers crossed. Man. Fingers crossed, man. Fingers crossed. We, we briefly spoke about New Japan. Are there any yeah. like hopes of potentially going there? Because I feel like even some of the matches I watched and you having a broader star, I feel like that's somewhere where I think you could potentially shine. It, it's a pipe dream of mine if I if I get myself physically fit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in, reg- <laughs> in regards to, you know, that's because when I when I started watching New Japan, it was um, people like Kenny Omega, um, people like um, Chris Jericho, um, and people like that. And that's what reinvigorated wrestling for me. Um, when Kenny done the cleaner act, I was like, this is this is great. Like this is what it is. This I, is what it's all about. How do you feel about him bringing it back? I'm so happy. I'm happy. I'm elated. <laughs> <laughs> because when 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 I when I was on the hype about Kenny Omega in regards to my mates, um, I haven't got it wrong in the past in regards to people like AJ Styles, um, people like Chris Jericho. People speak to me in regards to wrestling knowledge with, with a high regard. When so when I'm hyping Kenny Omega in AEW, people are like. Why have you done this? Yeah. Like, why are you hyping him? And I'm like, to be honest, I, I see why you're asking that question. So now the cleaner's coming back. I'm going to be like, well, there you go. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 so i just be like, there you go. That's why I was hyping him type of thing. Enjoy it. Um, that's all I can say in regards to that. So no, I'm elated. I'm elated that, that Kenny's bringing back the cleaner. No, I can't wait. I can't wait. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually because even his match with um Sonny Kiss, where yeah. they rang the bell, he just done the V trigger, won the match, and he just sat there like, yeah. is this it? This is it. <laughs> is this it? <laughs> is this it? Is this, it? Is this the best the company can offer? Just no. wrapped Sonny Kiss. I was like, yes, there you go. That's what I want to see. Keep it up. <laughs> Thousand percent. It's it's been. I think AEW has been quite enjoyable. I I mean, with most wrestling companies, it's going to have its highs. It's going to have its lows. It's going to have its unenjoyable things. It's going to have it. Mm. What aren't you enjoying in pro wrestling right about now? I'm enjoying the the variants. I mean, we're we're blessed in regards to having so much of a back catalogue. Having so much in regards to time as well because of these lockdowns because of covid i can't really do anything else yeah so i'm just sat there and i'm just watching the free matches that ring of honor are, are dishing out every week i'm sat there and i'm reliving cm punk on the honor club i'm sat there and i'm watching the variants of new stuff that's coming out dream matches people like brian pillman jr who i'm watching week in week out in mlw all of a sudden be on AEW Dark and I'm thinking crazy. I hey, wrestling, this is this is good stuff. Like I'm enjoying everybody working everywhere as well. So obviously a couple of years ago, people like Sammy Callahan was working major league wrestling and impact. Now he's just on impact. But then you're looking around and you're seeing people like Wardlow working other promotions. Game changer wrestling, you're seeing people like Leo Rush. Killing it. Leo Rock from Game Changer Wrestling, absolutely killing it. Killing and you're thinking to yourself, anyone can appear anywhere, anytime in the US. So it's like, I'm enjoying that. I'm enjoying not knowing 
where somebody is going to end up. Anyway, that's what I'm enjoying. I'm not out. When it, when it was the days where people signed contracts and they were exclusive, it was like, I know where to see you. I'll tune in if I want. Now, I'm having to follow all the socials of said person, and I don't know where that person's going to be next. People like me are rushed, popping up, mask off. Do you know what I mean? What That's what I'm enjoying. I've, I've, I'll, say, I'll say that was probably top five top five moments for me because at that yeah. point I thought he was completely done with wrestling and he's still young he's like 25 like he's younger than me so in my head I was thinking he's been talking on Instagram for time like yeah I'm done with wrestling I'm going to focus on the music so then to see him pop up take off the mask I was like mm. thank God because this mm. guy is has he like I don't even think he's, he's he hasn't even reached his peak yet and Sky is still the limit for him. And so his match with Joe Janela was amazing. His recent match mm. with ACH not too long ago, mm. crazy, crazy, mm. crazy. So, yeah, like you said, I think just the possibility of just people turning up anywhere. Like, EC3's been on Impact, mm. just randomly showed up on Ring of Honor, mm. which I didn't think would ever happen. So I'm just like, yeah, as wrestling fans, we're a sport. It's, it's yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I say to people, like, listen, if... WWE or this brand, this brand isn't working for you. There's other, there's tons of promotions you can watch. There's, so many. There's way too, there's too much in fact. Like, I find myself not being able to catch up on everything. Like, the G1 yeah. Climax, I got to like day five and I tapped out. I said, you know what, I'm just going to wait to the finals. Wait to the final day. <laughs> wait to the finals because, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's like wrestling overload, but we're sport mm-hmm. at this point. We're proper, proper sport. Um, since so obviously beginning of the well not beginning of the year around March you had a lockdown so there was no wrestling have you been able to get back in have you been able to um, get back into wrestling yeah so what what it is is um, me and my mates obviously I drive so me and my mates the mates that I mentioned before Reese and Rogan um, Jack Maxwell um, there's a lad called Hardman Dan who would have they debuted this year if it wasn't for COVID. Yeah. We, we travel from Hull to Nottingham to get in the ring for two hours a week. We travel from Hull to Newcastle again, two, two and a half drive one week. So you're looking at four or five hours round trip just to get in the ring for two hours. So you got people like um, Lindsay Jordan at Contact Wrestling who lets us use her facilities. Um, and it's like, it keeps us sane because we, we're wrestlers at the end of the day. Yes, I, people like I do it as a hobby. Um, people like Reese and Rogan want those bookings every weekend. They're hungry for it. Um, hard man Dan, he's hungry for it. He's only 17. And it's like, it keeps us sane because one, we're spending that time in the car with each other. But two, we're, we're doing what we love and that's wrestling. And when I say to people, look, I'm going to go after work, straight in the car, pick up my lads and go to Nottingham or go to Newcastle. People look at me as if, you know, I'm some kind of lunatic, but that's what keeps me going. And it's, yeah, it costs money. Yeah, it's big miles on my car. But, you know, if it wasn't for that, like, I I go to work, I go home. That that, that would be my life because the gyms are shut. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that's wrestling is ninety percent of my my friendship circle in Yorkshire. If it wasn't for wrestling, I would basically have my partner and my two kids and that's it. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, wrestling as for for my mental health more than anything else been a benefactor so now everything's gone back into lockdown again mate oh it's absolutely crazy like i'm just thinking of it like you've got normal life well not normal but what is normal at the moment yeah till wednesday and then thursday is just back to where we were in march and it's like yeah i can imagine like i feel like the majority of people their mental health not being able to do the usual things not even being able to work out not being able to see family, not be able to just do things that bring joy to them. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just like another three weeks. And then, but who's to say they're going to let us do it for three weeks? They might extend it like they did last time. So, 
Yeah, it's tough, man. So, at the end of the day, it's just keeping yourself mentally there by watching wrestling and saying to yourself, look, I can pick something up from this match. What can I pick up from this match? Even watching each other's matches again and seeing, saying to yourself, oh, yeah, uh, I can pick this up. Um, you know, it, it's not just those guys. There's other guys who are like, like J.D. Boom, been influential to my career. And Kev Cash as well has been influential to my career. But at the end of the day, we've all got to keep each other in check because this is the time where, especially towards Christmas, where, you know, certain men might not get, you know, what they want, what they deserve in regards to not just like presence and that, but they might be feeling a bit lonely, do you know what I mean? Because they might not have like family. And that. So we've just got to all keep each other going for when that green light, because I don't think it'll be four weeks. Yeah, I don't I'm think it'll be. Like, I don't think so either. I feel like I'm they're th- probably going to extend it. They're going to extend it like similar to how they did before. Mm. There's, there's no way they're going to think that three weeks is just going to be solving everything. It's not. It's we'll not possible. Yeah, we'll be lucky if we potentially get a Christmas. If that. Yeah. I reckon if he said that on Saturday night, though, I think there would have been absolute uproar. That's oh, yeah. why they've said four weeks to do it. So, I don't know, man. Tough times. Tough oh, times. Mate, honestly. Also, I uh, know another thing. What inspired the yeah. bandana? <laughs> um, I think New Jack. Makes sense. Big up New Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Big up New Jack. <laughs> You knew that. Um, when I um when I was trying to find myself, a lot of people said, "Why don't you do the the gangsters character?" Um, obviously, I can't do the gangsters character that New Jack done with Mustafa and Smokey Mountain. You'd get so, arrested. <laughs> <laughs> you won't it's get put. It's not a good look at all, is it? Um, but uh, at the end of the day, people said tone it down and go from there, and I was like. I'll give it a go if I'm healed. But if, you know, if I start getting smoked by people in the crowd or people start jumping the, the guardrails, have I done my job right? Or maybe. Yeah. Or I like it, or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. This has been... Funny, this is... <laughs> <funny that range. laughs> no, it's true, man. But I feel like we're, we're in an era where people are smart. They're not going to try anything. Have you seen that video of... um? Jacob Fatu, I think someone was heckling him in the crowd or tried to jump over the guardrail mm. and he absolutely battered them. <laughs> absolutely. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to insert the clip for this video as well, but bro, he absolutely <laughs> battered him. And it's like... Yeah. I look forward to doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually crazy, man. Bro, this has been... This has been enjoyable. I won't even lie to you. We definitely need to... We even need to get you... We need to ho- hopefully try to get you down in London. Well, once lockdown is over, we want to try to get you in the studio, get you down for like full podcast, just meet the rest I'm of the for that. Just chop it up with us. I'm down. Before we end it, I've got this thing I want to do called Set mm. the Scene. So, JPR, I'm going to set okay. the scene for you. You're in your okay. dream venue. Yep. Main event in. Your dream event. Yep. With your dream opponent. Yep. What are they? Yeah. What are they? What's your dream venue? Um, in a dream event and dream, your dream opponent. Yeah. Okay, so dream dream venue. Let's let's go for it. Electric ballroom in London, in Camden. I love that venue. <laughs> I went I went there. We, where did we go? We went for a progress event. Yeah. The atmosphere was yeah. mental. Now I've usually go for music events, yeah. but that was my first time going for wrestling. Yeah. Mental. Absolutely man, sick. Man. Dream, well, a dream event, yeah. Yeah, so you could, you could even well, say mania. You can say December to December. You can say anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go for heat wave. Let's go for ECW type pay per view. That type of crowd makes sense. Um, dream opponent. There's only one. There's only one. It's Roy Johnson. Let's book it. Let's book it. Let's book it. Let's <laughs> book it. Do you know? Do you know something? I, I'll, I'll I'll break it down here. The amount of years that I've asked him, look, let's have a match. He's like, no. 
Ray, why like... are you ducking? Ray, stop <laughs> ducking. Ray, why are you ducking, him, man? Like, no, I don't want a match for you. Roy, let's have a match. No. Roy, let's have a match. No. Let's have a match. No. All to this. So, what I'm thinking is, when the green light comes for training again, I'm, I'm just going to have to, like, work my hardest and, like, keep sending him videos of how I'm improving. You just need, <laughs> hopefully need to... one day he said... <laughs> what we need to do, yeah? So, we need to... We have to wait for him... To for when he decides to take bookings again. And mm. maybe he brings back the Wasteman Challenge. <laughs> when, and then he probably has an idea of who he thinks is going to come out. And then your music <laughs> hits, you come out. He can't run from you. He can't duck from you if you do that. Roy, you've heard it here first. I've booked it. <laughs> Give me my money. <laughs> I, know, I, swear, I swear, it was a question that I asked him at one point every week. Like, every week, I said, Roy, let, let, let's... You know, let's find a promoter. Let's, you know, yeah, let's, let's work. It. No. So one, one day it might happen, but it's on his terms, it's not on mine. Do you know what is, we, we know Ray. We're gonna, I'm going to pester him. <laughs> I'm going to pester him. I swear to I'm going to DM him every day like, yo, Ray, you need this match. I'm like, this I'm, match. Like a, I'm like the annoying little brother. Yeah. I'm like the old heart, the black heart, in regards to that tonight. <laughs> So every week, legit, every week, I ask him, <laughs> and he's like, yeah. I don't know, I must have offended him when, you know, in the early days when I kept yeah. insulting him. But oh, that was yeah. to test the waters of, you know, his resilience. Yeah. To obviously make sure that, you know, he, he's got it. He just, he's, he's got the got money. It, it? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, Ray, big up Ray. I love you, Ray. But, yeah, you, can't, you need to stop ducking, man. We need, to, we, need to, we need to see this match, man. Because even when we had Dre on for the podcast, we were just telling him, like, when he got announced for the NXT UK Championship Tournament, we were just like in awe, like, yo, there's Mandem, like, on WWE, on NXT UK representing. Mm. You know, it was proper good to see. So, yeah, would love for, yeah, I'll, I'll listen, I'll pay, I'll pay for that match. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, listen, once everything clears, hopefully we can, I don't know, we'll chat, try to chat to some of our connects. See if we can book it and then, you know, <laughs> try and make it happen, man. Try and make it happen because we need to see that match. <laughs> but it's, it's been an honour to chop it up with you, bro. This has Thank been you, in the know with JPR. Would you like to let the people know your social media handles? Where they can yeah, so it's JPR um, underscore for underscore life in regards to both Instagram and Twitter. I think I've got that right. I might not have. I'm very forgetful sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a, we'll have everything in the description, anyways, man. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that's. I think it's that. Um, but yeah, in all seriousness, thank you for having me. Really oh, appreciate it. Thank you for coming on, bro. It's been a long. It's been probably like two, three weeks since we've been trying to get this done. But I mean, it's better late than never, in it. We've done it. We've done it, done it man. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Rest things. Buy the mandem for the mandem. Bow.